I enjoy shooter games, and if you do too, then I want to share this Steam promotion with you. The Battlefield franchise is having a sale until June 14, 2021, of up to 75% off some of their best and worst games. This includes such titles as Battlefield 1, 3, 4, and 5, Battlefield Hardline, and Battlefield Bad Company 2 and Bad Company 2 Vietnam. I personally took the opportunity to scoop up some of these titles while they were on sale. And since I've never played any of them, you can look forward to my first impression videos in the near future. Also, I'm not being paid anything to talk about this promotion. This is just something which caught my interest that I wanted to share with you. Coming up next, I'll share the details of the sale and also a little bit on how I decided which titles to purchase and which ones to avoid. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe in order to see the upcoming first impression videos and other great content on my channel. First up, Battlefield 1. This title, developed by DICE and published by Electronic Arts, or EA, was released in October 2016. The game takes place during World War I, the Great War to End All Wars. According to the game's description, this is a first-person shooter with multiplayer battles of up to 64 players. You can play as infantry, cavalry, and control vehicles such as tanks, biplanes, and even gigantic behemoths. Reviews from players who bought this game average from mostly positive to very positive. This is a big selling point for me because if most players love the game, then there's a good chance that I will too. Some of the recent reviews describe the game as amazing or epic, but there were several negative comments about hackers being a problem. This seems to be a regular complaint for a lot of the EA Battlefield games. One helpful reviewer suggested never using quick search and looking for servers labeled no hackers and anti-cheat. I'll be doing a first impressions video in the near future and I'll be sure to let you know if there's still a good player base and the severity of the hacker problem. I should also mention that Battlefield 1 has a single player campaign that you can play if you're not into multiplayer servers with hackers. Most people who've played both the Battlefield and the Call of Duty single player campaigns consider Call of Duty to be superior in this regard. Personally, while I enjoy a good single player campaign, I would be buying Battlefield games for the multiplayer experience. You'll have to decide for yourself if the 75% off sale price between $5 and $17, depending on the title, is worth it. In my opinion, most half-decent games are worth at least 5 to 10 bucks. So how bad could it be, right? And with Steam, as long as you haven't played the game for more than two hours, and you request a refund within two weeks of purchase, I see very little risk in spending $10 on this title. Conclusion Purchased Next is Battlefield 3. Developed by DICE and published by EA, this game was released in October 2011. The game setting is contemporary with a lot of desert warfare like you would expect in the Middle Eastern conflicts over the last two or three decades. According to the game description, you can explore 29 massive multiplayer maps with lots of vehicles, weapons, and gadgets. You can choose from four player classes, Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon. Gameplay emphasizes teamwork, and each battle gains you ranks, ribbons, and medals. The Premium Edition being advertised now includes 20 additional maps, a multiplayer head start kit allowing you to unlock 15 advanced weapons, exclusive in-game items, and other bonuses. Recent player reviews are mixed, with the vast majority of complaints having to do with inability to launch the game. Some reviewers suggested workarounds, while most simply said, don't buy this game. There were a few happy customers who still liked the game, including the single player campaign option. I didn't see any complaints about hackers, which could mean that there are no longer any populated servers. For me, the mixed reviews didn't justify the $10 price tag, while there are currently better options available for the same price. Conclusion? Pass. Now on to Battlefield 4. Released in October 2013, this has a contemporary game setting. According to the game description, you can complete assignments to unlock new weapons, dominate tactical challenges in huge interactive environment, demolish buildings shielding your enemies, control vehicles such as gunboats, helicopters, stealth jets, and anti-aircraft guns. The premium edition being advertised now includes all five expansion packs, 20 additional maps, 48 exclusive assignments, exclusive gear, 12 bonus battle packs, and more. Recent player reviews are very positive, with some calling it the last good Battlefield and better than Battlefield 5. Other reviewers said it was still amazing in 2021, 
so much ahead of its time, and lots of active servers in the EU and US. The single player campaign had mixed reviews, which is typical for Battlefield, but playing them will unlock weapons that can be used in multiplayer games. For me, this title was a no-brainer for only 10 bucks. Conclusion? Purchased. Battlefield 5. Released in November 2018, the game setting takes place in World War II. Enter mankind's greatest conflict across land, air, and sea, with all gameplay content unlocked from the get-go. Choose from the complete arsenal of weapons, vehicles, and gadgets, and immerse yourself in the hard-fought battles of World War II. The Definitive Edition gives a list of cosmetics and other perks that supposedly improve the value of this offering. Recent player reviews are mixed, with most complaints being about the number of hackers in the game, especially on the Asian servers. Some also point out that Battlefield 5 is not as good as Battlefield 4. One reviewer complained that EA doesn't have a system to report someone for cheating, and they concluded that the publisher doesn't care about their customers. Another reviewer pointed out that new players are quickly kicked out of a squad by the senior players. And unless you're old school, there doesn't seem to be much teamwork. This is a pretty normal reaction for most squad-based games, because nobody wants to carry dead weight throughout the fight, but it sucks some of the fun out of it for new players learning the game. I'll be making a first impression video soon, so I'll let you know how it goes and my thoughts on the game in 2020. Lastly, I will mention that Battlefield 6 is expected to release this year, so many who have been playing Battlefield 5 for a while now are ready to move on to the next title in the franchise. Despite the mixed reviews, this game seemed fun enough to try, and since it was included in a bundle I purchased on Steam, I figured, why not? Conclusion? Purchased. Next up, Battlefield Hardline. This game was released in March 2015. It has a contemporary game setting with urban and rural civilian terrain. According to the game description, this is a cops versus criminals experience. Plan the perfect bank heist and get away with the loot before the cops take out your crew. The multiplayer includes massive 64 player battles and the single player campaign is inspired by great TV crime dramas. Drive muscle cars, get into firefights, rob banks, run from the law and, well, the description sounds a lot like Grand Theft Auto, but with mostly bad reviews. Recent player reviews are mixed according to Steam, but almost all of them are actually bad reviews. Most reviewers said the game was fun, but the community is dead, and that there are no servers to play on except one that was full of cheaters. Others complained that the game wouldn't run, and more of the typical EA doesn't care about its customers that we've seen on some of their other products. If this title was only 5 bucks and worked, then maybe, but for me, it's not worth even the advertised 10 based on the poor reviews and current state of the community. Conclusion? Hard pass. Last up, Battlefield Bad Company 2 and Bad Company 2 Vietnam. I lumped these two together since they are part of a bundle and have several things in common. Released in March 2010 and December 2010 respectively, Bad Company 2 is a contemporary desert warfare setting similar to Battlefield 3 and not unlike Middle Eastern conflicts of the last two or three decades. The Vietnam version is just what it sounds like, a Vietnam jungle setting with all the cliché that makes it so awesome. Just imagine Fortunate Son playing in the background, but due to copyright restrictions, I can't play it for you, so here's the best I can do. This is the oldest title of the bunch, originally released in 2010 and full of the vehicle and infantry fighting that you would expect in a Battlefield game. You can traverse large maps, destroy buildings, try multiple different weapons, and even enjoy a somewhat predictable single player campaign. Player reviews range from mostly positive to very positive, but the recent reviews are almost all bad with most complaints about multiplayer technical issues and EA's terrible customer service. I guess reviewers are saying more of the normal EA hates its customers recurring theme. Several recent reviewers requested refunds because the game simply would not work on multiplayer because of a missing CD key and resolving it through EA was impossible. They suggested buying it on Origin instead of Steam, so I may end up doing the same. On the positive side, many reviewers said it was the best Battlefield or Call of Duty type game ever made and was nostalgic joy to play. I ended up buying the bundle on Steam, but perhaps it was a mistake. I had the same CD key problem that everyone else ran into. The CD key provided through my Steam purchase didn't work after several tries, so I went ahead and requested the refund. I guess I'm an unfortunate son. Conclusion? 
purchased, but immediately returned. For this sale, I purchased Battlefield 1, 4, and 5 as part of a bundle, and Battlefield Bad Company 2 with Vietnam as another bundle which I had to return. For the titles I'm keeping, I'll be making a first impression video for you to consider in the coming days. As with any game purchase, be sure to check the store page for both the minimum and recommended system requirement. If you can't run it smoothly, then it's not going to be fun to play. Likewise, content in this video is current as of the date it was published, but everything is subject to change after that, so be sure to review the details carefully before you decide to buy. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. This is Rascal Knight. I'll see you on the battlefield.